Hi, I'm Scott Campbell, sales manager of Fiberglass Developments. I've tried to capture on videotape both a technique for working with fiberglass materials and a fun project which can be modified or copied to suit your taste. If you bought the tape so you can duplicate the roaster trunk onto the back of your own project car, sit back and enjoy the demonstration. I have provided a materials list and expect the video to explain all the instructions. If you bought the tape to learn about the moldless composite technique, please realize that it is not limited to this project. The fundamentals shown here can be applied to virtually any structure, including airplanes, boats, household items, as well as cars. We started the project for an extensive fiberglass repair article in Kit Car Magazine. As you can see from these pictures, more of the body was actually missing than was present. The car owner, Rob Holmes, had purchased the body at a swap meet for $25, not really knowing what to do with it. I enlisted his help in the reconstruction. Hi, I'm Rob Holmes, the proud owner of this new roadster. Before meeting Scott, the tea bucket hung in my garage for nearly two years. I didn't know how to fix it or where to get the materials. I was just getting ready to throw it out, and Scott came up with the idea it would be perfect for a restoration project. We began by repairing the firewall and floor to help regain the shape of the body. We actually sectioned three inches from the bottom of the bucket just to get the floor square. Next, we started patching in holes everywhere else. Mostly we used fiberglass mat, resin, and masking tape to put it back together. The last stage was to fix it cosmetically. We took out the door seams and used body filler to straighten everything else. After the mud was in place, we sealed it in Duratec. The Duratec surfacing primer fills, protects, and hides everything below it. It sprayed evenly too. Rob was happy enough with the progress of the body to start building a frame for the car. That's when we realized that we were onto something. I knew I could build a one-off copy of the early roaster trunk onto the back of the tea bucket instead of running the short truck bed like everybody else. I also knew it was time to let the moldless secret out of the bag. What follows is a thorough documentation of the moldless composite technique. Moldless composite construction is the process through which a functional composite part is built in the first production cycle without the time and expense needed to generate a female cavity mold. It can more accurately be called internally molded construction as a form does need to be made, but this form is covered by reinforcement and often stays with the final part. Moldless construction offers numerous advantages to both experienced and moderately skilled builders. Most notable is the ease with which complex shapes and contours can be created compared to metalworking. With simple tools, the proper materials, and knowledge of the six steps of moldless construction, durable structures can be made which will withstand years of rigorous use. Since I already had half the car body and wanted the first trunk to be functional, moldless construction was really the only option. Individually, the six basic steps of moldless construction are design, construction of internal form, shaping of internal form, reinforcement of internal form, modification of form and bonding of subcomponents, and cosmetic finishing. I designed the trunk from photos in Street Rider and Rod and Custom magazines. Both Rob and I wanted to achieve a nostalgic look so we turned to some shots of vintage racing cars at the Bonneville Salt Flats in the 50s. To determine the scale of the cars pictured, we measured their wheels. We knew that the wire wheels were often 16 inches, so we converted the rest of the dimensions to full scale accordingly. This gave us a good starting point that you will see us translate to the cardboard templates we use in the construction process. We made some custom changes to suit our taste, but basically developed a 50s period roadster. The material selection took a little more forethought. I knew that I wanted to use a sandwich core of polyurethane foam between layers of fiberglass cloth. I felt a stiffness advantage would give us a trunk which would be sturdy and still lightweight. Polyurethane foam is easy to sculpt and resists moisture and fuels. The only legitimate concern with this technique is that you can lose a little space on the inside of the trunk due to the thickness of the foam. I address this in two ways. First, I selected a thin one inch foam for the top of the trunk so I maintain the largest space possible. Second, I shaved some foam from the inside to reduce the thickness after the outside had been reinforced. The rest of the materials were selected for compatibility and durability. General purpose polyester resin was used with the saturated fiberglass cloth. This combination was inexpensive, user friendly, and strong enough to absorb the shocks of everyday driving. What little wood was present in the trunk was sealed within the materials for protection. The final coating of Duratec surfacing primer was also polyester based so it will adhere well and hide everything below it. This is important because when the car heats up in the sun, nothing will move or shrink, ruining the final paint job. Construction of the internal form began by screwing 2x4s to the bottom of the tea bucket. These were used as supports and alignment guides to keep everything to come later lined up with the existing floor. The first place I'm going to start is developing the contour here on the back of the tea bucket itself onto the cardboard. 
what I'm going to do is make a measurement to see how deep the cardboard is actually going to go into, and that will be the same distance that I'll subtract off the cardboard at the top, and that way we'll develop the curve and uh, be able to cut that out. That's the first dimension I'm shooting for. By scaling up the magazine picture, I was also able to plot points which define the outer shape of the trunk. We worked up the contour pretty well. We're now going to go along and uh, finish up what we want on the shape of the back of it, and then we'll make one for the other side as well. Using this flexible drafting tool, we're connecting all the lines that we put on here to uh, make one uniform contour across the back. Tool's real nice, it'll bend to any kind of contour that you want. And then along the rear here, why don't you grab the wheel? We wanted to have the same radius as the rear tire. So we've taken a 15 inch wheel and filled that in. And we'll simply trace around that as well. I'm going to take a razor knife. This seems to work a lot better than the scissors for giving you an accurate cut to the cardboard. Again, this is going to be the final shape of the vehicle. Accuracy at this point, this is where you need to spend your time. The rest of the technique that we'll show you with the fiberglass, all it develops from what we're doing here. This is where to spend your time. Don't think that you're going to make up for a wrong shape later. We've got the final shape here. I trimmed it all out with the razor knife. And it uh, looks real good, it fits well up against the body, and it's going to have a real nice contour. What we're going to do is we're going to trace this on another piece of cardboard and fine tune anything between the two sides. And then we'll cut out uh, the plywood templates, which will be the form for the whole shape that will be taking place later. Actual plywood construction begins with the floor. I took measurements along the length and the entire width. I then subtracted two and a half inches from each side of the trunk to determine the final width of the plywood floor. The line was drawn on the plywood, and the circular saw makes quick work of the cut. The floor was then screwed into place. Tracing the cardboard shape on the plywood. All these are very simple procedures. We're going to we'll just cut that out with a jigsaw. I've begun the cut. Notice that I leave the straight edge of the plywood as the bottom edge of the form. This ensures it will sit squarely on the 2x4 braces and the jigsaw is used only for cutting the upper contour. There's the first piece. Note that it might be a little bit rough and I saved the line, but uh, it's important that we screw the two pieces together and we'll shave it all down to the identical size. And uh, So I'm not too worried about the way it looks right now. that in place and we've got the first first look of what it's starting to shape up with. 